This is a remarkable feat for a small nonprofit dedicated to prevention to eliminate all diseases to conclude a two-day conference and now honor those who help us. Dr. Lemon, can you say a few words about our award ceremony? We are so excited to give awards to these seven individuals. Each of them represent excellence in what they do. They work extremely hard all year round for what they do. They touch the lives of so many people in doing what they do. So we want you to please watch their stories and uh, understand, as we do, how important people like these are to us. And that's why we have award ceremonies each year, is to recognize those who spend so much of their valuable time pushing forward the notion that we don't need to deal with asbestos anymore. So with that, I'd ask Dr. Frank to say a few words. Well, th this has been an important aspect of ADAO's uh, uh, ethos uh, pretty much from the beginning to recognize that this is a fight that involves a lot of people. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes people who've gotten sick, those who care for them, those who help fight uh, on behalf of ADAO. Uh, and uh, without this concerted effort, uh, we couldn't move forward and couldn't uh, uh, produce the kinds of results that we get and, and get the help we get up on the hill from the people who are trying to get this ban finally through here. And we also do recognize people from around the world uh, as part of this effort and have done so over the years who have already been successful uh, and we try to emulate them as well. So uh, with that, let us move on to recognizing those people uh, who are getting awards this year. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Uh, for those of you watching online, we spend time writing tributes for these honorees, so I encourage you to open the program. There's 117 great pages, but read about these seven honorees and also the law firms that help us do our work without legal referrals. And it is a pleasure to introduce my dear friend, my crazy fun maker, Jordan Zivon, who's like a brother. His father, Warren Zivon, Zivon passed away from mesothelioma, and Barbie McQueen and Jordan give ADAO a celebrity spotlight to tell the world that it happens to celebrities too, not just workers in a mine, not to diminish anyone. So Jordan, I think you're going to be playing a new song. Let's kick it off to Jordan. Congratulations to all of our honorees. And ADAO National Spokesperson Jordan Zivon here. Welcome to the 17th Annual Asbestos Disease Awareness and Prevention Conference Awards Ceremony. I joined ADAO in 2005 as their national spokesperson to honor my father, Warren Zivon, who lost his life to mesothelioma. I'm proud to continue the fight with ADAO, and I'd like to congratulate all the speakers, honorees, and sponsors on another productive and impactful conference. I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but I've sent along a performance of my new song, Imperfect, and I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Thank you.
It is truly our greatest pleasure tonight to present Ignacio the Alan Reinstein Award for his amazing work in Brazil and around the world. Ignacio, even though your heart is filled with pain, you have been able to take your personal tragedy and also that of your family and use your amazing talent and through the lens of your camera, share your story and the story of so many more. The work you do matters. It matters around the world. I've watched how you photograph people at Fernandez conferences and how you embrace every asbestos victim that walks in through that door. Your brother's struggle mattered. Nego truly mattered to all of us. So in honor of your amazing work with Abrea and others and ADIO, I'd like to dedicate this presentation to your late brother, but recognize your deep and amazing talents that truly are working to make this a safer and better world. Congratulations, Ignacio, on receiving the Alan Reinstein Award. Felicidades, Ignacio. Thank you for all that you do. Hoje é um dia de agradecer, de agradecer a cada um de vocês que pararam por 13 minutos das suas vidas para assistir esse curta. Um filme com a narrativa de dor e de perda, com um roteiro apertado e cronológico para contar uma trajetória que começou em 1937 e se arrasta até os dias atuais, contaminando e ceifando vidas. A AVICAF, associação da qual estou representando nesse momento, é a detentora de cada vitória. Esse prêmio representa cada família de ex-trabalhadores e contaminados. Por isso, o dedico a Nego, meu irmão, que dedicou os últimos 20 anos de sua vida na luta contra o asbesto e em defesa das vítimas que se contaminaram com o pó da morte. Quero dizer que estou muito feliz com a indicação e reconhecimento. E agradeço a Adal, a Abrea e faço em nome de Fernanda Genaz e Linda Heinstein. Sou porque somos. Obrigado a todos e viva Nego. So this evening we have the great pleasure of presenting Laura Baker with the Alan Reinstein Award. Laura, it is our sincere pleasure to recognize you for all of your great work in person and online. You have truly made a difference. You've taken your personal tragedy of the asbestos problem in Libby, Montana, and you have raised that up so the nation can hear you. I know you work hard day and night and it shows, you do make a difference. So on behalf of our family, we want to recognize your great work for over a decade to raise awareness and to work on ban asbestos efforts. So Laura, congratulations on receiving the Alan Reinstein Award. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you for all the incredible work that you do on behalf of everyone here in the US. Thank you. It is a true honor to be a member of the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization for the past 12 years. As everybody knows, I've tried to keep the story of Libby, Montana front and center for my family members and thousands that have been affected. It is an honor to accept the Alan Reinstein Award today. Words cannot express my gratitude for Linda, and how important the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization has been to so many families across the United States. Today, I dedicate this award to my brother, my nephew, my family members and friends, and the thousands of families in Libby, Montana. I love you, and today is for you. Thank you, everyone. great pleasure today to introduce uh, our award winner uh, for this year's uh, Irving J. Selikoff Award, a, a dear friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Melissa McDermott at the University of Maryland. Uh, it's truly an honor to present her to the ADAO world for all the work that she has done in looking after workers. Uh, she has made major contributions to the scientific literature in areas such as uh, uh, 
uranium exposure and veterans, uh, and has been uh, in her role as president of the Collegium Ramazzini supportive of the asbestos ban in the United States. So uh, without further ado, I give you this year's uh, award winner of the Irving J. Selikoff Award, Dr. McDermott, Melissa. Thank you, Arthur. Um, I want to start by thanking ADAO and survivors and their strong families. Uh, our dear friend Linda and all the passionate advocates of ADAO. Um, this is, a, is an honor. Uh, I might say a little bit of an awkward honor, and I'll tell you why. Obviously, it's an honor to be mentioned in the same breath as one of our inspiring heroes, Dr. Irving Selikoff. Um, I only met Dr. Selikoff once when I invited him to come to Baltimore to Hopkins, where I was on the faculty at the time. I asked him to teach in a course called The Physician in Society. He spoke about the third wave of asbestos disease and explaining to the students not only about the successive waves of different manifestations of asbestos disease, depending on the time since first exposure, but also about the obligation of the physician to alert society to threats to public health. And I uh, think that it was um, just terrific that we had just the perfect example of a physician in society, a really splendid example. Dr. Selikoff did accept um, our invitation, as I mentioned to you, and um, I, I can't think of a better person to give a lecture in such a class. Let we, me tell you why I felt a little awkward about all of this. Um, in addition to being caught completely off guard when I heard uh, from Linda and in her email uh, telling me that this uh, award was would like to be bestowed, I, I thought she had the wrong person. Um, I think mostly because I feel like I just was doing our regular work. I work in the part of the public health vineyard they call it occupational health. And a big part of our job is just to prevent the preventable. We all do this work. Dr. Frank, who just introduced me, does this work. Uh, many of the friends of ADAO do this work. And I think that it will make me the most comfortable if I just accept this award and let me share it with all of them. So please know of my heartfelt gratitude. Thank you very much, uh, Melissa. And as a successor to Dr. Solokoff, both in spirit and in reality as president of the Collegium, which he helped found, uh, this really is an appropriate award for you. So thank you very much for your gracious acceptance. It is with great pride that I am here to present the Selikoff Award to Dr. Andrea Wolf. I have known Dr. Wolf, uh, or more lovingly as I call her, Wolfie, uh, for about 20 years when she was a surgery resident at Harvard. I was lucky enough to recruit her here uh, after half the country wanted to recruit her. Uh, she is the director of our New York mesothelioma program uh, here uh, at Mount Sinai, and she works together with Dr. Christian Rolfel, who is one of the foremost oncologists uh, in mesothelioma, and uh, Dr. Ken Rosenzweig, who is uh, the radiation oncologist that basically wrote the book on radiation uh, for mesothelioma. Uh, Dr. Wolf is also uh, the principal investigator of an exciting trial that we have here at Mount Sinai, uh, injecting poly-IC into the tumor, a drug that stimulates the immune system uh, to combat mesothelioma even before we start doing surgery. Uh, we have exciting news that we even had a patient who had a complete response with this therapy, which is unheard of in mesothelioma. So we're excited moving forward. Uh, Dr. Wolf is an extremely intelligent and thoughtful doctor, uh, a superb surgeon, and just an amazing human being. Uh, I couldn't be more proud uh, 
of someone to receive this lifetime award, uh, even though she has still just only begun to make an impact on this disease. Uh, so we will expect many great things in the future. Uh, I would like to thank ADAO and Linda Reinstein uh, for recognizing the greatness that is Dr. Wolf uh, in her battle with mesothelioma. Thank you. Congratulations, Wolfie. Thank you to Dr. Flores, Linda, my colleagues on the Scientific Advisory Board of the ADAO, and to you, the patients, experts, advocates, and supporters attending this meeting. Growing up in a working class neighborhood in New Jersey, land of Bruce Springsteen, I always felt a special connection with real people, the underdog, just the type of folks who are at risk of diseases due to asbestos exposure, like lung cancer and mesothelioma. I operated on my first mesothelioma patient as a resident over 17 years ago. The realization that his cancer was due to asbestos exposure at work blew my mind and broke my heart. I spent my fellowship training public health education and career since then trying to help people with mesothelioma. It's the reason I came back to New York, to Mount Sinai, to the place where Dr. Irving Selikoff discovered and sounded the alarm about the relationship between asbestos and cancer. But early in my career, I could only help one patient at a time with surgery. And surgery has only a small role in helping them. Even that's the subject of debate. I've learned from mentors like Linda Reinstein and Raja Flores and role models like Irving Selikoff, what it takes to help people on a larger scale. As a surgeon, physician, public health expert, as a person, I accept responsibility in pushing to get asbestos banned, as that is the only way to stop the ongoing suffering I see daily in my practice. Dr. Selikoff was an outstanding Mount Sinai physician and epidemiologist who saw something happening to his patients, figured out the culprit and tried to solve it on a global scale. But to me, it was his New Jersey grit that helped him fight. He was just another underdog trying to do what was right. These are all things I wanna emulate. So thank you to Linda, my parents, Georgie, Dove, my colleagues at the ADAO, patients, supporters, and especially to my friend and one of my heroes, Dr. Flores, for the Irving J. Salikoff Award. As another Brooklyn-born, Jersey-grown, Mount Sinai physician epidemiologist, it means more to me than you can imagine. I promise to continue this important legacy, to fight to get asbestos banned to protect our patients, and ensure a safer future for all of us. This is the uh, Tribute of Hope Award for 2022. Our steadfast commitment to awareness, prevention, and policy to eliminate asbestos-related diseases. The awards being presented to Vicki Franzanetti for uh, a great deal of service that she's done to, to us uh, around the world. Uh, Vicki is a very talented interpreter. She translated my testimony and that of a defense expert at the big Eternit trial between 2009 and 2011. Uh, she has uh, translated at numerous conferences in Italy and France where the uh, criminal uh, prosecution of asbestos billionaire Stefan Schmidt-Heine was discussed. Uh, this extraordinary case, the criminal prosecution of an asbestos billionaire uh, in Italy. She continues to translate uh, for journalist uh, Silvana Mossano sending accounts of the murder trial in Novara, where Schmidt-Heine is being charged with causing 392 people to develop mesothelioma and die uh, in the area of Casale Monferrato. Uh, she has uh, done networking with lawyers, journalists, medical experts, and leaders of the community in Casale, most of whom 
uh, only speak Italian, and uh, she has enabled all of us to talk together and share information and work together uh, in this unique criminal case and cases that continue for justice uh, in Italy, usually unpaid for all of this work. Uh, she also translated uh, the uh, book by Eric Jonkier, Asbestos, My War with the Devil's Dust. Uh, Eric is Belgian, uh, wrote this book in French and Italy, and, and Vicky translated that. So it's, it's just been extraordinary, uh, the many types of services that she's done on so many occasions over the last 12 years. And, uh, and I've been working with people in other countries on the ground in over 25 countries over my life and trying to do something about the problem of asbestos. And uh, uh, no one has probably contributed more in enabling us to talk to each other than Vicki Franzinetti. So it's in that spirit that I want to honor Vicki for her wonderful service to our, to our work. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I'm extremely honored. Um, I got involved through the trial and because Kazal is very near Turin where I live, uh, I thought it was unacceptable. And I think one has to do the best one can with the means one has and the means I have languages and translating and I just thought that it was really what had been done here and elsewhere in the world was totally unacceptable and I thank you very much um, for this honour. It is a great pleasure tonight to recognize the seven organizations and six individuals as co-plaintiffs who joined our legal three legal cases, ADAO versus EPA. They happen to be significant for many different reasons. And if you missed Bob Sussman's lecture this morning, you can learn the details online. But let me tell you, I think this is the first time seven organizations and six individuals have ever sued the EPA for asbestos issues and won. So it is a big deal. None of this happens in a vacuum. ADO is grateful to have partners that step up and use their voice. So I'd like to recognize today, not only ADO counsel Bob Sussman, who will be accepting for these plaintiffs, but the seven organizations and individuals. So if you'll allow me, I'm going to read their names. American Public Health Association, Center for Environmental Health, Environmental Health Strategy Center, Environmental Information Center, Environmental Working Group, Safer Chemicals Healthy Families, Vermont Public Interest Group, Barry Castleman, Dr. Barry Castleman, Dr. Raja Flores, Dr. Arthur Frank, Dr. Phil Landrican, Dr. Richard Lemon, and Dr. Celeste Monforton. So we couldn't have done these three cases without you. Some of the individuals being recognized tonight were on all three, and some were just on one of the three cases. For me, it doesn't matter. It's a night to celebrate three legal wins. And on behalf of the co-plaintiffs and our great work, Bob Sussman, would you please accept the Tribute of Inspiration Award for your great legal work and to recognize these seven organizations, six individuals with the Tribute of Inspiration Award. Uh, Linda, I am uh, both delighted and honored uh, to accept this award uh, on behalf of our uh, very impressive uh, list of plaintiffs, both uh, organizational plaintiffs and uh, individuals who are uh, noted uh, and renowned asbestos scientists. And I, I want to emphasize that uh, these groups of individuals in, enhanced our credibility before the court uh, enormously because uh, uh, the issues we were presenting were uh, on, on behalf of groups who clearly care about public health and clearly fight for public health 
and on behalf of uh, individuals who are not only experts, but uh, people who have devoted their professional lives uh, to fighting for uh, protections against asbestos, uh, including a ban on asbestos that we're, uh, we're still working towards. So I think for the courts that we appear before, uh, the, the uh, support of these groups and individuals sent uh, a powerful message that the issues we were raising uh, were genuinely issues of public health importance. Uh, let me say just a couple of quick words about the cases. Uh, these cases were all against EPA and uh, they all had one basic purpose, uh, which was uh, to get EPA to use its authority under the Toxic Substances Control Act to the fullest uh, to take action on asbestos. And, and as, as all of you know, uh, asbestos was a priority when Congress overhauled the Toxic Substances Control Act uh, in 2016. And Linda and others worked very hard uh, to put asbestos on EPA's uh, screen and make asbestos a priority uh, uh, from day one under under the law. But unfortunately, uh, EPA was very slow on the uptake, and uh, the the actions it took were uh, were insufficient. And so we turned to the courts uh, in order to push EPA to do the things. Uh, that they needed to do, and and I'm 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 proud to say that uh, we achieved results which really matter. We got EPA uh, to make a commitment, for example, to address uh, legacy asbestos, uh, which they didn't want to do. Uh, we got EPA to uh, to make a commitment uh, to require reporting. Uh, on asbestos uh, from processes and importers uh, so that we could be confident that finally uh, we knew what asbestos was coming into the country and where it was going uh, and, and what it was used for. And we also got uh, EPA to agree to uh, uh, fill the gaps in its uh, part one chrysotile risk evaluation, which our scientists felt and we felt uh, was a disappointing and, and incomplete exercise. So just in, in closing, uh, what we accomplished is really tremendous in many ways. And uh, uh, the groups and the individuals who who joined our effort uh, were an essential part of the, uh, the success that we achieved. Well, the success comes back to you, Bob, because you were an amazing environmental lawyer and know EPA well, but ADAO could not have sued EPA on our own. These 13 co-plaintiffs helped us to muscle up and make TSCA work to protect public health. So thank you for your patience, Bob, and your brilliance, and to everyone who stepped up and was a co-plaintiff. We thank you, and we look forward to holding the EPA responsible in the future, but also working legislatively to finally stop the imports and use. Bob Sussman, thank you. Hello, my name is Richard Lemon, and I am the co-science advisor to the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization. And it's an honor for me today to be here with David Borox. And uh, he has uh, given the Andrew Snyder Memorial Lecture today. And in that lecture, he told us of a horrifying story dealing with a small town in North Carolina called Davidson, North Carolina, where he made a uh, documentary about uh, this town and its history of asbestos. 
The name of the documentary was Asbestos Town, Davison, North Carolina. And it won the Society for Professional Journalists Award, which is a very prestigious award for journalists who have done excellent work, which we have all seen today that David has done. And we're very honored that he has joined us at the ADAO uh, event today to honor us with his presence and present his uh, talk about the making of this documentary, which is very enlightening to all of us. So it is with great pleasure that I want to thank him for the ADAO. And also, we want to leave you with a little token of our uh, gratification for your being here and spending your time with us because it was, a, I know, a long drive for you to come to Atlanta. And as I heard last night, you came in quite late because you had another engagement going on at the same uh, day. So we appreciate the effort you took and are very, very happy that you came to visit with us today and tell us the story that we will remember for many, many years and follow. Because I know, as you said today, it's not a, it's not an ended story. It's still got a lot of history left to learn, as well as a lot of follow-up to do. So thank you so much for coming and being with us today. Well, and thanks so much. And uh, I'm honored to be here and to give the Schneider Lecture and uh, it is a story, as we say in the business, that has legs. I'll be covering it for many years, I'm sure. But I'm grateful to be able to give uh, a little bit of a wider audience to a story that really has been under the radar for too long. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Appreciate it. As an epidemiologist, by the way, just as an afternote, I will be following up on this to see uh, the future work and the surveillance that will be done. Great. Thanks. It's my privilege and an honor to introduce Rory O'Neill as this year's recipient of the Tribute of Unity Award. His lifelong commitment to justice for working people is profound, and it's demonstrated in his many endeavors. Just one is the magazine Hazards, which he has produced for decades. It is an amazing resource. And like in like the name of this award, it's just one of the ways that Rory unifies all of us. He unifies trade unionists in the struggle for safe workplaces, and he challenges the public health community to join with unions in that struggle. And most appropriate for ADAO, he elevates the stories of workers, their families and communities who are united in the fight against the uses of asbestos, in those who continue to allow its use, and importantly, justice for those who have suffered from asbestos-related diseases. Thank you, Rory, for your determination and your never-ending calls to action, and congratulations on this much-deserved award. Thank you, Celeste, ADO. I will now spend my two minutes saying what I, why I don't deserve the Tribute of Unity Award and then concluding if I was to receive an award, I didn't deserve it should be this one. I'll start seriously off topic with some ancient history and then hopefully drift into relevance. Around 2000 years ago, Pliny the Younger was staring across the bay watching Vesuvius erupt and he warned his uncle, Pliny the Elder, not to get in his boat to take a closer look. Uncle Pliny, though, ignored his nephew, um, jumped in the boat, and two days later, he choked to death on the fumes, one of the victims of Pompeii. It wasn't the only time Uncle Pliny should have paid more attention to his nephew. He thought asbestos could we uh, ward off evil spirits, and was wonderful because it um, didn't stain and was wiped clean. His nephew, though, observed the diseases of slaves in the workers making the asbestos cloth that so impressed his uncle. The punchline, for the entire commercial life of asbestos, which was mostly the 20th century, it's not been a matter that we didn't know the deadly properties of asbestos, it's what we didn't do about it. Six working generations ago, we knew that workers in asbestos factories were dying in droves. 
four working generations ago, we knew they were dying of cancer at far higher than expected rates. Over that period, the industry has moved from denying asbestos kills to admitting it kills, but it won't kill you, to admitting it kills, but it's safe if used responsibly, to admitting it kills, but is irreplaceable, re irreplaceable, despite every single application having a replacement and having been replaced. And that's where the USA is today, with the chloralkali industry, which doesn't use asbestos in the majority of its chlorine plants, fighting a US ban because it says it doesn't want to pay to move away from asbestos in the other plants. The industry doesn't actually outright say this policy will kill, over 100,000 die each year, that's the current body count um, worldwide. It requires a more scientific rationale. The criminally skewed cost-benefit analysis put human life in the collateral um, damage column with the cost paid in intangibles, human suffering, intergenerational hardship, heartache and bereavement, all topped off with a massive transfer of cost to the taxpayer in health and welfare tasks. Linda asked me to say, what's my proudest achievement, which, to, to which I replied, I've done nothing. But we have, and I'm part of we. We is important because this is not about information, it's about power. And power comes with organisation and collective voice. You've got organisations like ADAO, the Global Asbestos Ban Networks, trade unions refusing point blank to work with this stuff. And I'm proud to have been part of these networks for 40 years hopefully helping to build and nurture alliances locally and globally. If you want a metaphor for what we can achieve, last week we, a global network of unions, labour rights, environmental and asbestos organisations, stopped an aircraft carrier, a warship, in the middle of the ocean because we said poorly protected workers in an unsuitable Turkish shipbreaking yard shouldn't be made to remove tonnes of asbestos from a former French Navy, Brazilian-owned death ship. Next year, thanks to our campaigns, may see the start of a process to reform the UN Rotterdam Convention, ending what has effectively been a decade-long asbestos lobby veto on health warnings on prize tile exports. It's not just about asbestos. We face the same arguments and the same industries using the same playbook with diesel exhaust, benzene and pesticides. The global chemical industry will double in size by 2030, quadruple by 2060. There's a lot more lies to sell, while there are more profits to be made from poison. So we have more battles to fight, but we now have our own playbook. So if I had to choose an award, it would be the Tribute of Unity Award, because we have to be one and we have to be organised. It's about unity of purpose. I play my tiny part. ADAO plays a mega, major and globally significant role. On behalf of all of you, on behalf of all of us, I say thank you. Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization, ADAO. I am honored to recognize Simmons Hanley Conroy, our platinum sponsor for generously supporting ADAO's education, advocacy, and community efforts. Thank you for standing with asbestos victims and the nation for increasing asbestos and mesothelioma awareness and prevention. In addition to being a Platinum Conference sponsor, we are grateful for your continued dedication of the Alton Miles for Miso Race fundraiser, supporting ADAO. I want to express my heartfelt thanks to the Simmons Hanley Conroy firm with your unwavering help. We are so close to passing landmark legislation to ban asbestos and keep Americans safe. Thank you. Hello, my name is Perry Browder, and I'm here on behalf of the law firm of Simmons Hanley Conroy and all of its employees. We want to thank ADAO for all of the hard work that you all do. For those that volunteer your time, we thank you for making those sacrifices to truly make a difference. For those of you that support and attend these conferences, we thank you for all of the awareness that you spread not only at home, but throughout the world. People still need to understand that asbestos does kill and has not been banned in the United States. So on behalf of the people at Simmons Hanley Conroy, we wanna thank all of you at ADAO for the hard work, the results, and the continued advocacy that you do. For without you, 
this change in this voice would not be out there. Thank you to everybody and have a great conference. Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization, ADAO. I am honored to recognize the Gorey Law Firm as our gold sponsor. As a gold sponsor this year, the Gorey Law Firm has stepped up to help support our work to protect public health with prevention and policy efforts. ADAO is grateful for this partnership and looks forward to working together in the years to come. On behalf of ADAO, thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Sauber, the managing partner of the Gorey Law Firm. On behalf of our firm, I just first want to thank ADAO for putting on such a extraordinary conference this year. But I also wanna thank them for the work that they do each and every day to provide resources to others regarding the dangers of asbestos and asbestos-related diseases. Like them, we also have a mission to support the affected individuals and advocate for change. And because of that, we chose to come on board as an ADAO Gold Sponsor. We are so thankful for the work that they do and want to be able to work with them and help them advocate for years to come. We're humbled by this recognition and um, we just want to again thank Linda Reinstein, thank ADAO, and thank all of you for attending. directors for ADAO. I'm honored to have the opportunity to recognize and thank our silver sponsor, Bailey and Glasser. We welcome you to the ADAO family, and we want to let you know that without the support of organizations like yours, we would not be able to continue the work that we do globally to influence ultimately a ban on asbestos for good. Again, we are truly grateful for your contribution, and we look forward to working with you for many years to come. Thank you. Hi, I'm attorney Mickey Robb, a partner with the national law firm Bailey and Glasser. On behalf of our firm, we are very grateful for this recognition. We are also very appreciative of the sponsors and organizers who help make the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization's annual conference a complete and resounding success. Bailey Glasser is honored to partner with the ADAO, which plays a huge role in educating the public on the dangers of asbestos and the horrors its victims experience. And we thank you for your unwavering commitment to the prevention of asbestos-related disease. It's my personal goal and that of my colleagues at our firm to help lung cancer and mesothelioma victims secure the justice that they truly deserve. It's my pleasure to accept this award on behalf of Bailey Glasser, and we stand together side by side with the ADAO in fighting for individuals suffering from asbestos-related diseases. The ADAO's ability to educate citizens on the dangers of asbestos while also advocating on behalf of its victims is something our firm appreciates and understands is so important. Bailey Glasser fully supports ADAO's vision of an asbestos-free world devoid of the devastating diseases that asbestos causes. And we congratulate you and your organization on another very successful year. Thank you again and keep up the great work. directors for ADAO, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank and recognize our longtime supporter, Early, Lucarelli, Sweeney, and Meisenkoden. You have been so generous to us throughout the years, and we want to thank you for your silver sponsorship this year. We are really honored to be able to call you a partner. We look forward to working with you for many years to come, and please know that without your support and your generosity, we simply wouldn't be able to do all that we do to try to help folks who are suffering from asbestos disease, educate, and ultimately influence a global ban. Thank you again so much. On behalf of everyone at Early, Lucarelli, Sweeney, and Meisenkothen, I'd like to congratulate Linda and the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization on their 17th Asbestos Awareness and Prevention Conference. 
Your long-standing commitment and work on behalf of asbestos victims and their families has been invaluable. If we continue to work together as a community, we'll be able to achieve the goal of banning all uses of asbestos to protect future generations. Thank you for all that you do. Well, on behalf of ADAO, we want to congratulate all of the honorees and our sponsors for really stepping up to the plate with either great work or donations. It has been a terrific three event conference and it hasn't been easy because some of you had to record your speech, join by Zoom or brave COVID to come out in person. But we did it and we did it with strength. I look forward to welcoming all of you in person in 2023 as we continue our efforts to bring knowledge and, and action together and end the man-made asbestos disaster. Take pride in knowing that you participated in another landmark conference. Thank you for your support and congratulations to all.